Hi. Okay, I'm back with just a, uh, it's not going to be a quick update. It's going to be pretty long. So let's get started. Um, a lot of this is going to be about my son and our experience, our situation that we're going through right now. Um, because a lot of people have asked for our story. Um, so here goes. Right now, for those that don't know, we're in the process of having him evaluated for autism spectrum disorder. Um, which has been kind of a long road to get to this point. Um, he had a very kind of hands-off laid-back pediatrician and it was just well give it another year give it another year um, when there were red flags everywhere so we got on a waiting list at Children's Hospital last October um, that can take 12 to 14 months so we opted to go the private route through Depelchin. It is $1,325, um, which we didn't have. Uh, we're kind of, it was a big borrow steal kind of situation to get him in. Um, with it, a lot of people, you know, want to ask, oh, did he have problems after? He received his vaccines. He is completely vaccinated. Um, we did a delayed schedule, but he's four and a half now, so he has received most of his shots. The only vaccine that he never received was rotavirus, nor did my oldest, nor did my youngest. Um, and it, I, I never noticed a problem after vaccines he never had a bad reaction he never had a bad response um, for some people that's when they notice I guess the um, regressions start or the delays become more significant for us that wasn't the case it seemed to be more tied into um, antibiotics um, when I was pregnant, I was on several courses of antibiotics with um, him. It was a really rough pregnancy. I was sick a lot. Um, and so there were lots of courses of antibiotics when I was pregnant, including um, antibiotics in labor for uh, strep. And I did go into, I was just at the cutoff for preterm labor. He was 37 weeks. So, to consider a late term preemie. Um, so, had him, he was on, he had a course of IV antibiotics at six weeks and then uh, antibiotics at home through his eighth week. Uh, which just turned him into this completely unhappy baby. He started to get over that, caught a virus from being in the hospital, inhaler, just miserable. Um, and every time we thought, okay, he's finally catching up, he's starting to sleep right, eat right, happier baby, and he would get sick. Um, the big thing was ear infections at that point hit a lot. So, of course, at that point, you know, had no idea. So, just took him to the doctor, got the antibiotics, and, oh, hey, look at all these setbacks we're having. He hit all of his milestones late. They told me it was okay because boys had more time to catch up. Um, then, you know, he was doing okay. He'd gone for a while. He'd gotten pretty healthy and he started to make a lot of progress we were pretty happy with it um, and then when he was about uh, 18 months old I put him in a Mother's Day Out program so that I could take an office job and he did really really good um, and he was happy he had a great time and his teachers just always commented you know, he was really sweet he had some odd 
mannerisms, but they just, you know, they chalked it up to, well, you know, some kids just have odd little habits. Um, like, he would always cry when I would pick him up, not because he was sad, it was just a stress thing. He would cry. Um, because he hated the transition. So, he, and, you know, most kids really, really happy. They're excited to see their parents. He would always cry because of the change in, the, because of the transition. He couldn't handle it. Um, so, when he was um, just over two, I quit my office job to take a retail job closer to home so that I was not commuting two hours every day. And shortly after I came back, he got sick. He got pneumonia. And I figure he picked it up when he went for his two-year checkup. He, you know, early November when I took him. So, of course, there's all kinds of crud going around. Took him for his checkup. Came home. Sick. Pneumonia. Great. Um, did, you know, his 10 days of antibiotics for that. It ended up not clearing up. So, he relapsed. We needed two more weeks of antibiotics. And that was really when it just started kicking us in the ass. All of a sudden, he couldn't handle anything. Um, and he started just getting sick. It was one thing after another after that. It's like his immune system just really took a massive beating from that. So he missed a lot of school. Um, he was sick. Like I say, all the time. It was this virus, that virus, this ear infection. So, of course, uh, and after a certain point, I, I really kind of, if, if I knew it wasn't something serious, it was just a virus, I definitely quit taking him in to uh, be seen. Um, just that I worried he was going to catch something worse. Um because it got to be constant and I didn't want them to push me for any more shots or I just wanted them to kind of leave him alone and let him get better and it was a period of a lot of a lot of probiotics and a lot of vitamins and a lot of rest and a lot of um, trying to sort things out and he but the, and I didn't really notice just how profound it had affected him until I took him back to Mother's Day out the next year. Okay, he's two and a half. I listen to all the other kids talking, and he sounds, you know, like he belongs back in the 18-month-old class. He's not speaking as well as the other kids. He's not interacting with the other kids properly. You know, he is still eating the same things he did uh, when he was 18 months old. Um, all of a sudden, things bothered him as far as noise and light. And his response to those things was to, you know, cover his ears and shriek and spin around in circles and chew on his blanket. And, you know, had have massive meltdowns and when I it, this is not just the temper tantrum I didn't get my way so I'm gonna be pissed off and scream for a minute no this was bang his head on the wall hit himself pinch himself throw himself down throw other things down throw things across the room which was dangerous not only to himself but to others this was a kid who at you know two and a half could carry two gallons of milk into the house for me a very strong boy. He is four and a half now. He wears a small in the boys section. That is the size that, you know, a six or seven year old would wear. He is big. He's very tall. Um, and so it's one of those where it, he's like a little Hulk when he gets mad and he loses it and has a meltdown. It's, it can be dangerous. Um, and when I'm trying to explain this to people and they just say, well, if you tried X, Y, and Z, well, you don't understand. He doesn't comprehend 
X, Y, and Z. I can't do that. You know, he doesn't get a timeout because he doesn't associate, you know, punishment and misbehavior. It's just not there. You know, you, if you interact with him and you're used to dealing with one to two year olds, great, because that's what he acts like. And, you know, it's really bad that we'll start to make progress and if there's if there's a dose of antibiotics that has to be had that's what really seems to trigger it um you know and some people feel like my kind of theories on it are, are bunk and that's fine um because they haven't lived with my son they haven't watched it but I think that due to um some severe leaky gut issues obviously antibiotics would exacerbate that and it would trigger just kind of this epic cascade in his body um that obviously would would cause a regression which would explain you know why things can get better um but the, the, the big symptoms that we see are a, a lot of the stereotypical um, autism behaviors, the hand flapping, the spinning in circles, um, echolalia, which is one of the most irritating, and I hate to say it, it but it's, it's a very irritating symptom um, where they basically parrot you most of his conversations, about 80% of his conversations, come from uh, cartoons that he's watched or songs that he's heard on the radio or things that he's heard other people say. If you ask him to tell you a story, um, if you hand him a storybook and it's one he's never seen before and it doesn't have characters he knows, he can't tell you a story. He has to know the story already. Um, and that really started to get bad around two and a half after all the antibiotics after he'd been sick. Um, and I, because I don't feel in this, you know, I guess take away my crunchy card, I don't think vaccines cause autism. I think that autism is, is uh, for all intents and purposes, an autoimmune disease. You're born with it and something can trigger it. Can vaccines trigger it? Sure. Um, so can any other illness or upset to, to your immune system, to your body. Um, like in my case, uh, childbirth triggered, uh, Hashimoto's disease. So, you know, it's, it's always possible for something to trigger that. I, I think, you know, the reason we're looking at such a high number of cases these days is, I'm more inclined to believe that it's just, you know, our bodies are tired of taking one for the team. You look at all the drug use, the legal drug use, the crap that we feel like it's okay to put in our bodies, um, in the forms of all, like, the, just the junk food. It's, you know, it's not food that we're eating, it's food-like product, and you know, you can only do that so long before you really start to really mess up the gene. <laughs> um, and I look at the way, you know, the diets that I ate when I was pregnant with each one of my children and the way it's manifested in their health, and it's astounding. Um, but I think for, you know, for my son, the big thing was antibiotic use. I didn't take any antibiotics when I was pregnant with my oldest or with my youngest. Um, and I, I look at the, the differences in the way they handle health challenges and it's amazing. Um, it was really hard, you know, of course, uh, to get their doctor to listen, they just said, no, it, it can't be that. Antibiotics can't cause those problems. Um, and as far as, you know, the whole, like, virgin gut, they just felt it was not important or an issue or relevant or anything like that. And then I look at my youngest, who is the only baby that I successfully nursed, um, and I made sure for a period of 
once I got her on exclusively nursing at three months that for a full three months she got no supplement she got nothing but breast milk and you know so far she's been so much healthier I digress um but so it's <clears throat> it's hard we'll start to see progress in my son I'm hoping that the progress continues we are going to start um him on a paleo diet uh, that we'll just all do because it's easier. I'm not a short order cook. I'm not cooking five different dinners for five people. We'll all eat the same thing. Um, supplements, behavioral, speech therapy, behavioral therapy, occupational therapy. Um, we have our follow up with Depelgen in a two to three weeks. And we'll know more. Um, luckily he was a hot ass mess for the evaluation. I mean, it's one of those where you're sad that you really have to pray that they have a horrible day and they really, um, act out and have a meltdown and just show every one of those behaviors, um, that autistic children can have the potential to have or to show, um, especially when there in a new environment when they're stressed out trying to transition um luckily he showed most of those and they really got to see they were kind of surprised uh they they actually couldn't complete the evaluation the way they wanted to because of his behavior of which it's sad that it pleased me that you know I was like good someone else gets it finally they see it and it's not just he's a bratty kid, it's, you know, and it's not that I'm a bad mom, it's just that he can't, it's just how he copes with being in the world, it kills me because he's smart, you know, you'll see, he can't make up a story, but then he can come in and, you know, he, he's very mechanically inclined, he's very, um, you know, geared towards the, let me pull something apart and figure out how it works and put it back together. You know, <clears throat> he's that kid. Uh, which can, it's a blessing and a curse in and of itself. Thank God we put all the electronics up so the only things he has access to are things that I don't care if they get broken anyway. It's, you know, and it was bad because when I was, you know, dealing with it when he was a little younger and I would ask, oh, is this normal? And people would say, oh, you know, I, I think people are scared to tell a mom, no, it's not okay. And you need to get him into early intervention now while he's still young enough for it. Um, because we missed the cutoff. The cutoff is three. And so we have to go through the private route now. Um, because the school district won't do anything for him until he's six. I'm, I'm not waiting until he's six. So, you know, it's one of those, I, I guess, don't be scared to hurt a mom's feelings if you really think something is wrong. I mean, if you just think she's a bad parent or kid's a brat, you keep that to yourself. I get that enough in a day. <laughs> don't give it to a mom who's actually just trying to, you know, survive. But if, you know... If she's continually asking, is this okay? Is something wrong? Is this okay? Then her gut's telling her no, and she just wants someone to give her that extra push that, no, it's not okay. Get your kid in. Get him checked. If you, cause it, what, what does it hurt to have him checked out? I mean, to give some peace of mind, if nothing else, if they can find out, yes, my kid's okay. Great, your kid's just a little delayed. Fine. Awesome. But if they need more interventions and more therapies than that, you know, they're more effective when they get them done. So, push them, get them, you know. So many moms now just want that push of, yes, you know, you, you do need to have something done. So, if, um, if there's anything I haven't answered, which I'm sure there's tons I haven't answered, um, I've probably just, like, rambled on for 20 minutes. Um, ask me, that's fine, message me, um, leave a comment, 
I'll get back to it. I'll do another video. Whatever. <laughs> so, uh, about to wake these kiddos up and head inside. It is hotter than a coal miner's ass out here. So, alright, until next time. <laughs>